So what was that fantastic beast? It was a Japanese fire building newt. But let's take it way back to when I first started this journey. This is a tiny terrarium I built for a tiny animal, for Nelly the Newt, one of my best and most proud creations, and probably one of the most popular videos on my YouTube channel to date. But this is Nelly. Nelly's a Japanese fire belly Newt, and Nelly is growing, growing and outgrowing this terrarium. This video is about Japanese fire belly Newts. It's about how to keep adults in a simple system and enclosure. This is Kelvin. Kelvin is also a Japanese fire belly Newt. But we'll get there, we'll get there. So I built this eight months ago. As you can see, it's doing super well. It's completely overgrown, everything is flourishing. So I built this eight months ago for a Japanese fire belly Newt EFT. So basically it just came out of its more phase onto its terrestrial phase. And the life cycle of the Japanese fire belly Newt is it starts as a little axolotl looking, well it actually starts in the egg, then it hatches and it's fully aquatic axolotl, gills, develops lungs, comes on land. It spends about one to two years on land, probably close to the two year mark. Then one day it's going to go back to its aquatic phase. Now I'm super excited for that aquatic phase because when Japanese fire belly newts are fully grown adults, they're absolutely stunning. Uh, beautiful, you can have them with fish, you can have them in awesome paludarium setups or more aquatic setups. Uh, this is just temporary short term. I thought I would be creative. I thought I would try something new and Nelly's doing great. Nelly's doing fantastic. He's super big, he's growing super well. He's got an awesome orange stripe. And for all this, plenty of space for him. He's got all his terrestrial elements. He's basically like a little gecko, but he's a Japanese fire-bellied newt. There's isopods in there, there's slaters, there's roller polies. Everything is growing. And I guess my biggest lesson with this was is that is I've just started building terrariums in the last, I guess, year and a half. And to be honest, the more you practice, the more you learn about ecosystems, microclimates, what they need. This is not best husbandry for a fire-bellied newt, but what it can be is something creative if you, even if you just want to make a terrarium like this on its own with nothing in it, with just maybe some bugs. For example, you've got springtails, isopods, maybe even millipedes. Not in direct sunlight because it will overheat, hence I've strategically put this where there's the right amount of UVB exposure. Japanese fire-bellied newts are amphibians. They don't like direct sunlight. They don't like overheating, but they do like a bit of light every now and then. So it's perfect. The placement of it is perfect and is ideal. Once again, if you are a beginner, just start with a basic aquarium, maybe an exoterra, plenty of ventilation, UVB light on top, nothing too penetrating. Do 50% water, 50% land, and just watch them grow and enjoy and learn about these awesome animals. But anyway, let's check it out. So to build a basic adult Japanese system and setup, I knew that I needed plants, lots of them, and I needed hardscape, rocks, driftwood, whatever you need, lots of things for them to climb, hide, and things that they'll need in the enclosure to provide the right stimulus and environment for them to thrive. When you become an enthusiast or a hobbyist, you obviously know that you need tanks after tanks after glass tanks and more glass tanks. Now I'm cleaning this one up and getting it ready for the two Japanese fire billet newts. It's like two feet by foot and a half by foot and a half for all you North Americans, but decent size for the short term home for these two Japanese adult fire billet newts. I've got some spider wood, silk into the back. I think spider looks epic in the right, I guess, environment. The aquascape or the hardscape layer was aqua soil with some sand, some rocks, and this is basically serving as a drainage layer as well as decorative substance. And the aqua soil is gonna be perfect for the plants to grow. I added the one rock that I got and I thought this should be enough in the short term. I have to think that this isn't gonna be fully aquatic. There's gonna be terrestrial elements because Japanese fire blade newts are not fully aquatic. They're probably maybe like an 80-20 split, depending what you have. Got a net, scooped out all the debris, loose debris, started putting in the plants. As night falls, I need something. I need snails. These are Malaysian trumpet snails and there's too many of them in my fish tank, but they're perfect because they reproduce very quickly. So I only have to put a few in into this very basic system. Now remember, this setup is super simple and that's the way I wanna keep it because there are big things coming for these guys. This is a Japanese fire blade nude. These are two adults that I adopted from someone up north and I'm super happy to have them on board in my collection. I've had these guys in the past and it's awesome to have them back. Now the name is a given. They're Japanese fire belly newts. They originate from Japan, but in New Zealand they kept as exotic pets. Now these guys get big, four to six inches in length. They start off super cute and super small. That's how they're sold in pet shops, but that's not where they start. Their life cycle essentially starts as an egg. They morph into the tiny little axolotl thing. Then they go into a terrestrial phase. And then years later, they go back into the aquatic phase. Now weeks have gone by and this 
enclosure set up is transforming. All the greenery, all the vegetation is flourishing. But the journey started with Nelly, and Nelly is now living in an epic stream terrarium until she gets a little bit bigger. Now this link to this, this terrarium is below in the description, and this was an epic build, and it's Nelly's temporary home until he starts dipping his toes in the water. But I'm Max. I love ectotherms. Ever since I was a kid, I've been obsessed with these animals. And with these adult Japanese fire pellet newts, it's no different. Now these guys eat bloodworms, they eat whiteworms, they eat mosquito larvae, they eat anything in the water that they can get their mouths on. But they're voracious eaters and super entertaining to watch, and they'll absolutely clean up all that food. They're fed every two to three days just because of their size, and things are starting to cool down in Christchurch, so I'm trying to cool them down slowly, but they're still eating like they've never eaten in their lives. So as a recap, what did I do? I got a glass tank, I put in the substrate layer, and hardscape layer, and lots and lots of plants, with some lighting, two LED bars. I also put an air stone in, and this oxygenates the water. I don't have a filter for this because I do weekly water changes, but you can definitely put some light filtration in. Now weeks later, everything just flourishes. Everything grows, everything gets green. Lots of hiding places, lots of nooks and crannies. Japanese fire billet newts love to climb through the vegetation and also hide in it. So, I'm gonna leave you with Nelly the Newt. Nelly the Newt is devouring some bloodworms. He doesn't even need live food anymore. He's growing so fast, so proud of him. Stay tuned for the next one. Like I said, I'm Max. I love ectotherms, I love creating content, and I hope you enjoy my videos. Stay tuned.